May Jesus be praised and onward with Mary. Have a good and holy day to all you dear children. Welcome back in the sacred hearts of Jesus and Mary and in the chaste heart of Saint Joseph. Welcome back to our morning segment, San and Kafara. Today is Tuesday, the 29th of October. The Church commemorates with particular devotion the liturgical memorial of Blessed Chiara Luch Badano, whom we all know. Over the course of these eight years that have entered your homes, we have spoken about her several times. This young girl from Liguria, who at a certain point falls ill with an osteosarcoma that shows no mercy and embarks on a path of holiness, offering her entire life to the Lord. Imagine, as you know, you will remember, think that she decides to give up morphine in the advanced stage of your illness to offer everything to Jesus and prepares for death as if it were a festive event. Truly, their faith becomes something solemn, sacred, I would say even moving from an emotional standpoint. Church Light tells Mum that she wants a white dress. There are also photos. There's one in particular of the body of Church Light just after she died. She is truly worn out by the illness, yet remains so beautiful. Her testimony is captivating. This reminds us, if we needed reminding, of the seriousness of the gospel in a time of total, absolute trivialization. As we will see in today's theme, today's window, the mascot chosen for that pseudo-jubilee of 2025 by the false church. The show goes on and I dismantle it. Of the solemnity of faith, of the mimicry, as Monsignor Fulton Sheen would say, of the Catholic identity by Santa and of the false church. Chiara Luciabano had said to the Lord, Do you want to play with me? I'm in the game. Here we go, my dear ones. Today we ask on this 29th of October to Chiara Luch, who was part of, as you know, the Focolare movement led by Chiara Lubic, a Chiara Lubic who today has been particularly targeted, who knows why really. I was saying we ask Chiara Luce from heaven to intercede for us and help us to play along with God's game, which if you want to understand the rules of God's game, you must read the gospel. You must live the gospel. There's only one, and here it is, this is Chiara. You see, in the final phase of her life, she kept in touch, even by phone, with many people, especially young ones, to whom she spoke words of evangelization. When there is personal testimony, everything always changes. I was saying, what are the rules? One wants to know the rules of God's game, the Word of God, the Holy Scripture, particularly I would say the Gospel. There are the rules of the divine game. If we want to know and apply them in our lives, we simply need to read the Gospel and put it into practice. In our life, may clear light help us all. Well, there are just a few days left until the Bridge of the Dead, as it is called which for us Christians, for obvious reasons, cannot be the celebration of Halloween, which also has diabolical roots. The Bridge of the Dead includes the Solemnity of All Saints on the 1st of November, where we celebrate all the saints of heaven in a single day. It is a thought directed towards paradise, a thought directed towards eternity, a thought directed towards heaven, our ultimate home. Ultimately, knowing that we are on our way to paradise fills us with joy and gives us strength in trials. Those who do not believe in heaven, those who do not believe in paradise are already defeated within themselves, because then what do they live for in the face of all life's trials? Instead, so much good, St. Francis used to say, that I expect every pain to delight me. Paradise, 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 sang St. Gemma Galgani, and this is the 1st of November, then the 2nd of November, which is Saturday. 2nd of November is the feast, the prayer, the commemoration of the faithful departed. I recommend that you do not go to the cemetery that day. Do not gather in crowds. Go before in these days, go afterwards. But on that day, come to Verona. So, I'll give you the schedule, I'll quickly remind you. Regarding the Feast of All Saints, we are in Trento. I urge you, I'm telling you because it's important. It's not that you can think if... You can do it, if not, that's another thing for God's sake. But you can't think that I'm going to Verona on the 2nd and then skip the All Saints' celebration. No, we need to adopt an emergency mindset 
So those who can should attend the Mass for the Feast of All Saints, which will be celebrated in Trento at the Sporting Hotel. In Trento, on Roberto de San Severino Street at 4.30, Holy Rosary, then Solemn Mass. This Friday in November, it is All Saints Day. As for the accommodation of the deceased faithful, we will be at Busolengo at the Montresor Hotel Tower at 4.30 in the afternoon. Joining us will be Father Enrico, and it will be a day of intense prayer for our dearly departed. You can still continue to call the office of Radio Don Minutella to ask if you would like to have a Mass offered for your deceased loved ones. Bring with you the photos of your dearly departed that we will bless and then we will place them by the altar, aiming to create this atmosphere of communal prayer. With our dear departed, who, if they are in purgatory, will receive a huge suffrage on this second day. And instead, the third, the day after the dead, is Sunday, so we are in Bergamo. Here, Sunday the 3rd of November, at the Gramsci Auditorium, at Malpensada and CSC Malpensada, the 3rd of November, always at 4.30 in the afternoon. For the Mass, we are also preparing for the other appointments of the following week, which are very intense because on Friday the 8th, we will be in the March. I can now give you the conference center in Ancona. Seems it's our first time in Ancona City, right? Friday the 8th of November, 36 Luigi Albertini Street, Gross, Building D, as in Domodossola 1, Ancona. Here in a moment I might pass it to the team, and the direction will present it to you again. This Friday, the 8th of November, in the Marcha region, at the Ancona Conference Center D. 1D like Domodossola, D1 Conference Center. We will be there for the celebration of the Mass, where we can arrive for confessions in this moment of grace. Instead, on Saturday, the 9th of November, we will be in Pescara. On Saturday, the 9th of November, we are in Pescara. The hotel is already known. Now the direction is proposing the location of the meeting. We are at the Regis Resort right there, near Pescara. And finally, on Sunday, for the moment we stop here, on Sunday the 10th of November, we will be in Casino. I would like to say to all the faithful of the small Lazio remnant that we are waiting for you. It's time to come together, to meet at the hotel, restaurant, in the Little Wood, Casino Frosinone. And I would like to say that the coaches are ready to depart from Rome with two stops. The coach is completely free of charge. It leaves from Rome, picks you up and takes you to Casino, and then from Casino, it brings you back home. There are still about 15 free places. Hurry up. How many of you are still undecided and want to come not with your own means, but by coach? Hurry up, because there are still about 15 places available. Just a reminder that today is Tuesday, so this evening at 9 o'clock, there is the War Tuesday. Don't miss the appointment with War Tuesday, given the latest situation that has arisen. There it is, from my book The False Church and Its Destiny, which is always available by calling the office of Radio Domina Nostra. You can get this book. This evening, we'll tackle the chapter I covered in my book. There it is, the title, Cardinal Kafara, St. Athanasius, and the Church All Over Again. What should be done? The church that we must follow, that of Jesus Christ then, is it the church led by Bergoglio who is not even a pope? First, or is it a church to be rebuilt? Second, or perhaps this church no longer exists? Third, or again, is it a church that survives in a small remnant? Here you are, dear children, the harsh sentence is that some among us have left because they suddenly realized in front of the last musical instrument that this is still the church of Jesus Christ. 
No, it is not the Church of Jesus Christ, and the sign is that it openly goes against the Gospel. This evening, we'll talk. We're now going to revisit the post. Share, share, share at 9 o'clock on the YouTube channel of Radio Domina Nostra, this war-themed Tuesday appointment. Don't miss it. Share it. Always like every live stream and let the community spread the message of Radio Domini Tele Nostra. We sincerely congratulate. Appunto questa finestra, se lui vorrà compatibilmente ai suoi impegni, lo ringraziamo vivamente Don Ramon. Chi ha ascoltato, la trovate sulla playlist di Radio Domina Nostra, il suo intervento, vi sarete resi conto della pertinenza dei discorsi tenuti da eh, Don Ramon. Don Ramon has made a well-structured reflection regarding the current situation, which has led to some significant conclusions. I refer you to his evening catechesis because you can always find our catechesis available on the playlist of Radio Nostra. While I remind you once again about this evening's catechesis, Cardinal Kafara, St. Athanasius, and the Church again, for the series of war catechesis from my book, The False Church and Its Destiny. There's also the other book that we will soon start commenting on, which was recently released and is at risk of being boycotted because I haven't discussed it or commented on it yet. There it is, The Eagle and the Sun, the first volume of commentary on the Gospel of St. John. You can find it available at the office of Radio Domina Nostra or in the places where we go for these prayer meetings, which are always very intense and very beautiful. Well, my dear ones, so finally now I tell you that I am on my way, of course, as you know, because I am preparing for this Bridge of the Dead in Trento, Verona, and Bergamo. In Trento, day one, in Verona, day two, and in Bergamo, day three. I'm glad that Don Enrico is joining us, that gives us a helping hand where possible. And also, I would like to remind you that the opera naturally needs your support. We have created a new international bank account number for reasons that you may easily understand. I thank all those who, without waiting for Don Minatella to say it, as wise individuals realize that the opera needs to be supported and therefore make regular, consistent contributions without receiving any gratitude from me. To support the opera. And then there's also the Postal Current account, as you can see. There it is. The Postal Current account is an easier way to help us. Helping us with what? Help us in spreading the work. Which work? The work of truth, the work of the small remnant that survives to uphold the Catholic faith. And that the Madonna is with us. Dear flowers, look, there can be no doubt. I would like to share an episode that might otherwise have been forgotten. I see my guardian angel reminds me. So, we went to Graz, didn't we? The weekend was very busy. Yesterday we were in the car for seven hours. You know we have our little vans. Seven hours in the car. Seven or more. Seven hours. Yes, more or less those. Because we were coming from Austria, Eastern Austria to be precise. So we had to cross the entire area from Klagenfurt to Villach, then cross the Alps, enter Udine, and gradually head towards the places where the meeting will take place. I'm busy these two days, not in Veneto, but elsewhere, for personal reasons. I was saying we were in Austria on Sunday to meet the tiny little German-speaking minority. There weren't many of them, in fact, there were very few. And on Saturday, we were in Udine. So on Sunday at the meeting, we were in Graz, so with my entourage, starting from Brother Celestino, we booked accommodation in one of the hotels in Graz, right in the center. Historic center, roughly. Historic center, roughly. Historic center, I'd say. Then Brother Celestino, with his evangelical innocence, I believe that the attacks on Brother Celestino these days are revealing of the infamy that lies on the other side. This is what I personally think. With his characteristic light-hearted style, which doesn't mean being foolish, 
So when it's needed, Fra Celestino, as you know, knows how to speak. Bread is bread, wine is wine, son of the Dolomites, no need for me to say it. So, Brother Celestino, with that simplicity that defines him, then told us that while he was in the hotel lobby there in Graz, Austria, just think about what the Virgin can do. A fellow sees him. You know that Fra Celestino wears the habit, I walk like this, because I don't know if you know. Dear Pope Francis, as they call him, since he wants everyone to be welcomed in the church, and says that the doors are for everyone, 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 he has reduced me to the lay state. Here we are again. The signal has dropped for the second time. I was saying that this is quite unusual. I think our enemies are a bit dim-witted. That's what I believe. Because it makes you wonder why the signal always drops when Dominatella does saints and coffee in the morning. Can you explain? I'm in Cremona, then Milan, Udine, Graz, now here. How is it possible that it's the Fantazzi cloud that follows us? So every morning we clear the field. Hey, dear children, we need to be on high alert. So I was saying that between the little loan we were there in Graz, I hope you haven't left. Please be patient when the live stream goes down and stay there for a couple of minutes, sometimes even seconds, because it's memorable. He told us that while he was walking there in his robe, because he, because he never takes it off, in the hotel lobby, a rather nice hotel, a guy stopped him, can you believe it? A Spaniard, a Spaniard working in Austria, he stopped him to ask him to confess. Do you see what thank God can be done? He made it clear, Bergoglio's speech, because it's always important to say no one wants to fool anyone. And then he must confess there in the hall. Evidently he needed it. Who knows from what danger that man was saved. And thank God he ended up in a hotel hall in Graz. Between Father Celestino, who was confessing, and this Spanish gentleman, who was there for work in Austria. Here this is to tell you how no one in the association is sitting idle, chatter is just chatter. But then you get down to it. Because, by the way, I saw a very interesting war film. I was really struck by the sacrifice of the Canadian troops to repel the line of Nazi fire and how many died. Imagine around 3,100 Canadian soldiers died in this battle near Antwerp and more than 4,000 Nazis, between four and about 8,000 lives sacrificed by the war efforts. This morning I was thinking of those souls, especially as we approached the 2nd of November. They killed and perhaps were killed in turn, but if they did not embrace cruelty and violence, if they did not seek anger, but found themselves defending the values of their homeland, God does not condemn them. Rather, He rewards them if they died in the field, rewarding them with eternal bliss. These are lives torn from human existence. Most of them were young. In these days, let there be those who say masses for the fallen soldiers of past and current wars, where fewer die, because wars have changed in terms of convention. However, in the past, many died. In this one battle, of which I saw the film yesterday, around 8,000 soldiers died, including Germans, Canadians, and Allies. Now on to today's topic, while I remind you once again of the appointment this evening at 9 o'clock on the YouTube channel of Radio Domina Nostra, from the series of War Tuesday Catechesis, taken from my book False Church and Its Destiny in a new edition, titled Cardinal Kafara, St. Athanasius, and the Church from the Beginning. Well, now let's move on to today's topic. In these moments we started by saying that today is the memorial and the memory of Blessed Chiara Luce Badano. We said that it speaks to us about the solemnity of the gospel, the seriousness of the Christian faith. Balthasar wrote a booklet during the post-conciliar period titled The Serious Case. Well, Christianity is the serious case. So instead, in light of all this, we witness the show that the farce church is able to carry on. You know that Katerina Emmerich, and not just her, but she comes to mind at this moment, spoke of a false church that would be built. It doesn't just speak of a consortium made up of people, 
but of a proper structure. And this structure is what today dominates and governs in the Vatican through the false Pope Francis. The cursed synod has concluded, the synod of all, the one in two phases, but it hasn't, as we said yesterday morning really, as Don repeated last night. Don Ramon hasn't really closed off because Bergoglio has decided, as you know, not to write an exhortation as is customary at the conclusion, a document to conclude this synod, but to keep the doors open for discussion. So they will eventually place us with the technique of the boiled frog with the Overton window. These are the Masonic chemicals. Overton is conditions, let's say, mysterious. But these two are the very techniques of the masonry of the global powers. And to convince the masses to gain their consent on things that at first seem unthinkable, here is the refined technique of persuasion, brainwashing. The frog, if you put it in boiling water, it jumps out because it senses the danger. If instead you let it swim calmly in the stainless steel pool, sooner or later the flame from below gets stronger and the water heats up and the frog dies, it dies boiled. And so Roman Catholicism is dying, boiled away. They want to make us believe that this is the Church of Jesus Christ, founded by Jesus Christ, when in fact they are openly going against the gospel of Jesus Christ. So, with the event wrapped up, the theatrical farce of the Synod, who were the main players? Bergoglio's professors, State Father James Martin, and circulating on social media is this final handshake between the two very pleased, Jorge Mario Bergoglio and James Martin that belong, listen carefully, to the Society of Jesus. Here, the Jesus they follow is not the Jesus of the Gospel, it's the anti-Jesus, the Luciferian, the neo-Gnostic Messiah. So then, after this closing of the Synod, where the main figures are Bergoglio, James Martin, Ulrich, Zuppi, Steiner, Fernandez, they are all the partisans of Santa now. Immediately they set up the next event, the so-called Jubilee of 2025. Yesterday, with plenty of media coverage, the criteria for this Jubilee were presented by the Vatican official in charge of the event itself. A Jubilee of hope in the name of those who let's see, perhaps in the name of Jesus Christ, of faith. We are not prudes. We are fundamentalists because we want to talk about Jesus Christ and the gospel. Instead, the Jubilee is hope in the style of Caravaggio and Chagall. Not the time now, we'll return to it. This jubilee was desired by Bergoglio and presented yesterday by Monsignor Rino Fisichella, who has been waiting for the Cardinal's purple for a lifetime, always seeing it from afar like a mirage, worse for him, pro-prefect of the Dicastery for Evangelization, of the section for fundamental issues of evangelization in the world. Next to him was a woman, Barbara Giada, director of the Vatican Museums, it's a spiritual event, you can see that, and Davide Mambriani, curator of the Jubilee and Culture Review for the concerts and exhibitions. So as you can see, the opening is absolutely all spiritual, don't you think? At the center is the gospel, at the center is Jesus Christ. No, it's not as you see, it's not like that. An event is presented as if it were the Shermes, which is the municipality of Vatilapesca. During the summer when the tourists arrive, this is actually what it is about. But we still haven't got to the point because in the context of this event being proposed, the Jubilee of 2025, various events are announced that I recommend you not to miss. These spiritual events, the mascot for the Jubilee of 2025 has been presented.
When they signaled, I hadn't had the time, because I drove all day yesterday. As I said, I was in the car for more than seven hours. But I'm with my brothers from the Sodalizio. We have a chat. And they sent me this mascot that we will show you in a moment. This mascot for the Jubilee of 2025. And when I looked at it this morning, I could hardly believe it, because it seemed to me it was Don Enrico Berasconi, as you know, who is always one of the first to see these things. He shared it in our chat and wrote, he didn't write it himself, he quoted the article, the Vatican revealed the official mascot for the year 2025. It's called Luce. Then Don Enrico wrote, Tell me, it isn't true. I'm waiting, and yet, it is true. So now we're able to show you, there it is, the mascot you see, an increasingly older and white-haired Monsignor Rino Fisichella. Well, I won't dwell on him. There it is, the mascot. That is the mascot of the solemn, sacred, divine event of the Jubilee of 2000. The show must go on. They have chosen the mascot. This mascot is a Japanese manga. Understood? Right, let's proceed in an orderly fashion. First, I asked the crew and the director to show, because I gave them a couple of images this morning that are a bit more direct of this mascot, to look at it not just as Fisichella shows it, but taking it directly from the... And this, however, is the image with Fisichella. But there is actually the image of just the mascot, because we need to look at it closely. Please, those of you who are following, pay close attention to this mascot. This is the logo, the symbol, the mascot, let's call it that, as it has been named, of the Jubilee of 2025. What is this thing here? Who is this comic? Who's it? Her name is Luce. And why was this chosen? Because one might say, well, a bit of lightness is needed. Come on, Don Minutella, don't be so extreme. Get with the times. It's the church trying to please the world. Apart from the fact that this, from a theological standpoint, is absolutely impossible. Because Jesus Christ said it once and for all in the Gospel of John in God's speeches, if the world hates you, know that it hated me first. Those who are children of the light in the world, even if they are not Christians or baptized, will seek you out later. They seek the Christian message's gravity. I don't know. I'm here, I won't say where, for personal reasons these two days. Anyway, in the heart of northern Italy, look, this morning I saw more people. I'm not saying this out of controversy, it's a fact. More immigrants than Italians in the city where I am, which is an unsuspecting city. All right, this morning I saw, I don't know how many immigrants, how many women in burkas hit on the head, then they have many children, lots of kids, all Muslims, but they see how things are going in Rome, how the church is doing. This is the mascot, let's try to get a closer shot if we can. This is the mascot, tell me it's not true, writes Don Enrico. Let's tell him. Don Enrico, unfortunately, you must have discovered it too. It's true. This has been chosen as the mascot for the Jubilee of 2025. Now one reflects and says, but why do they choose this mascot? It's a manga, the Japanese manga. What is it? Sure. While we remain on the image, the Japanese manga, the term manga means quick image or moving image, it refers to a collection of images, a collection of images. Manga are comics, so they are Japanese and modern, very different from Western comics in many ways. And I cannot delve deeper into this right now due to time constraints. But there are a couple of interesting points about manga. Here, once again, we will put this together, we will return to it, but we will have time. I think it is an absolute trivialization of Catholicism. It is truly the pathetic epilogue of a false church, that of Bergoglio, which has reduced itself to wanting to please the world and to embrace the world's logic, which are, in fact, the Masonic ones aimed at destroying Catholic identity, my dear friends. 
That is the place that will later appear, as you can imagine, in the cathedrals. So children are drawn to manga comics, because at the entrance of the cathedrals, parishes, and Roman basilicas, you will find this mascot. Because the mascot then becomes crucial to indicate a solemn event, which was meant to be solemn and serious for a jubilee. You understand what a painful handover is before our eyes. Let's move on while we return to the image of the manga, the mascot of the Jubilee. Because now I must tell you the most important thing. In a moment I will share it with you. I will also mention it to Don Enrico, dear Don Enrico, dear brothers of the Sodalizio. Now you will understand. Where I went into detail, you will see what comes up in a moment. Move on then. So in manga, these Japanese comics, this mascot, Luce is called Luce. And it almost seems like a provocation to Chiara Luce Badano, who was a soul that played with God, but in the solemn manner of the gospel. I was saying that Japanese comics have certain characteristics. First of all, they are read from right to left from right to left. This is already an important first point to mention. And then another important thing to mention is that there are different types of manga. There are manga for an adult audience only, for adult women only, and so on. Anime and manga are not the same thing. Manga are comics. While there are anime, which are Japanese animated cartoons, and they take up space, it's precisely from these comics that we have this mascot before us, which has been chosen and given such prominence. I don't know, you tell me. Why is there a devil then? Always remember, there's the banal, there's the ridiculous, there's the grotesque, all right? And here we are at the grotesque. This mascot, as you can see, is wearing a yellow raincoat. Why? The K-way indicates waterproofing. Be careful, because this K-way that even covers the head completely covers the whole body. What do you think is the reason? When it rains, we wear raincoats. What does the K-way do? The rain is coming. The rain is falling down. It doesn't come inside. I don't know if you understood the subliminal message that's inside. Look at the eyes of this very amusing mascot that a surreal Monsignor Fisichella, a devotee of von Balthasar. I would like to know if von Balthasar had been alive. Would Monsignor Fisichella have had the courage to take the mascot in his hands, smiling and presenting it to everyone? So this K-way, as you can see, is what immediately dominates the scene. The K-way dominates the scene. What is it then? The K-way. It's what prevents you from getting the water inside. You know that one of the symbols of grace is water, rainwater. Just as the rain falls from the sky, as the prophet Isaiah says, and does not return to me without having produced what I sent it for, so is my word. It will not return to me without having produced the effect for which I sent it. The word of God is like the rainwater. It comes down and has an effect, but if you wear what you want, you won't get wet, the water won't get in, it's waterproof, it prevents it from entering. And in this comic, which is diabolical in my opinion, within that immediately likable aspect, something furious is hidden, dominated by this yellow, and it even covers the head. But why does it cover the head? Perhaps the Jubilee is held in Groglia, or maybe it's already been planned. They contacted the military aviation and said that throughout the Jubilee and all the events of the Jubilee in 2025, it will rain. But then why have it on your head as well, for what I just finished telling you? Then of course you'll notice the stick. Interesting, the mascot of 2025, Light. You see that he's holding the stick in his hand. It should be the pilgrim's staff, right? It should be the pilgrim's staff. Do you think it is? Look at it closely, what shape it has. There are horns, one higher and one lower. Maria, my children, there is a truly immense pain in my heart, because recently some have pushed our people to leave because they said that this is still the Church of Jesus Christ. Have you seen this stick? It's the pilgrim's staff. But where is the shell? 
The shell is light. She has it somewhere in her eyes. You see that in the eyes without the iris, there is the... There are shells, but there are no shells in the stick. The stick, on the other hand, looks like one of those used by Bergoglio in the past when he was still disguised. And they resemble horns, you see? They're the horns, the horns of the table, my dear children. The cross is there, yes, can you see it? In the chest of light, however, it is external. It's outside the waterproof jacket, but if it's raining, why put it outside? Well, dear children, each of you should reflect. You might think that my interpretation of the mascot is excessive, exaggerated, do as you wish, I care little. I tell you what I have verified. It's the proof of the pudding now, because three clues make a proof, as Agatha Christie used to say. Let's look at this image again. Place me on the left, because that is the mascot on my right of the Jubilee. I am the mascot. Thank you. Let's leave it at that. Well then, three clues make a proof. Someone might say, well, Don Minatella, maybe you've gone too far. Here's the proof. Look closely at this mascot. Watch it, all right? Now let's take a look. Don Enrico, dear brothers of the society, all of you who are following, let's take a look. Pay close attention to what is about to happen. A twist. Watch Don Minutella when he works for you, how brilliant he is. No one had succeeded. In my opinion, to get there, that's why Don Minutella is so targeted. Let's take a look at the mascot of the last Olympics, those sacrilegious and profane ones in Paris 2024. There it is. What do you notice? Notice anything? Let's put a song on now, if possible. Let's see if the direction can manage it. But I think the direction is preparing this. As you yourselves will have noticed, that there is something that connects you. What connects them? First of all, both mascots, the one from Paris, 2024, that of the sacrilegious and profane Last Supper, and that of the Jubilee, are both mascots taken from the Japanese world, from the world of Japanese manga, as you can see very well. Here they are. This is first, stands out. The second characteristic that therefore remains within the realm of comic art. Now, if a worldly, pagan, earthly, sporting event like the one in Paris, where they didn't miss the chance to target the Catholic faith, can choose a mascot like that. Here it is. This is the mascot, I repeat, of the 2024 Olympics. Why on earth must Rome also choose a mascot, one of those Japanese manga characters, with such a cartoonish style, with this style that is let's say, light and trivial. Is there not going to be a superior direction? But who hasn't noticed it yet? Clearly, the last piper on duty believes that this is still the Catholic Church. Is that still the Catholic Church? Then check the eyes. Notice the eyes? Is there something that connects them, or am I mistaken? Notice the eyes. Both of them, the two mascots, have no personality. They shouldn't have any. Yes, it seems they have one, but they don't communicate. The light we see, the mascot for the upcoming pseudo-jubilee of 2025, is a mascot that seems unable to communicate. Pay attention. And there, as if asking for help, he holds in his left hand the stick with the horns, and he's wearing the raincoat, which is what dominates. It's what dominates over everything, the raincoat. Then notice the posture of the right hand, but I'll stop here. The way the right hand is positioned could be represented in many ways. That posture is typical of certain circles. All right, I have to wrap up for today because, as I mentioned, I'm traveling, but it must have been about an hour, as usual, or rather, three quarters of an hour. But before I finish, I have a suggestion for Monsignor Fisichella and Bergoglio. Here they are. Look at Bergoglio's staff. Thank you, Director. Let's compare it now with the light stick, the mascot of the pseudo-jubilee of 2025. The games are made. So whoever wants to understand, understands Overton Window, Boiled Frog, that is still the Church of Jesus Christ. What kind of pastoral grace is that? 
Could you indicate what that pastoral staff means? Look at the pilgrim staff, which is not in the hands of the mascot. The wickedness of the evil pseudo-jubilee of 2025. Look at Bergoglio's pastoral staff and you'll understand everything. However, I was saying to conclude that I have a suggestion to make. I still have time to change my mind, but if they really want to keep it, I would suggest adding this too. This is my proposal, the mascot that I propose for Bergoglio's jubilee. There it is. No. This is still in light. It should have arrived. What a shame, because perhaps I didn't send it, but it was a final twist. Let's see, be patient, but it's always a big hassle to send it while traveling. I'm trying to see, yes, I sent it, but evidently it hasn't arrived. I asked the production team if my proposal has reached you. Here, here, this is my proposal for the Jubilee of 2025. Pinocchio, where are you going? Bergoglio, what are you doing? Fisichella, you're getting into trouble. You see, there's the long nose of lies, of falsehoods, of endless untruths that the false church keeps producing about the masses who consider themselves Catholic. This is my mail for the mascot. All this happens, dear children. We who were calm like a small remnant, compact, united, they have come to divide us. They are trying in every way to split us apart. My pain is immense because I show you things I've taught you over these eight years while constantly risking my skin. In many ways, one risks their skin. I opened your eyes, kept them open. Then you find the first one says, no, Bergoglio isn't the Pope. But that is the church. Let Don Minatella shout, scream, it's no longer useful. He's fanatical, he's fundamentalist, he's extremist. He doesn't want a dialogue. How can I not want a dialogue? I asked, well, I don't want a confrontation. He shouts, he screams. But on this side, we have found, obviously this does cause pain. Dear souls, be careful. Be very careful with the rosary in hand. Pray the rosary incessantly. Keep your heart and mind always turned to the Lord because these are times of harvest. The Eternal Father, what is happening in Rome, was all foreseen. I saw a church, says Catherine Emmerich, false, the church of darkness, bizarre and extravagant. There is no doubt that behind and within the subliminal messages that this mascot light represents and that I have explained to you lies precisely, despite everything, the bizarre identity the banal identity of this false church that is heading down the path of the abyss.